Welcome to Briar's Music Showcase, I'm Briar Cisneros and welcome to another video. And in this video I am entering in another contest. So this is actually the first contest I'm entering this year, but it's the third contest I've entered for this particular person right behind me. Of course it's Larry Graves of Canadian Stun Muffin. So I already did two, uh, I've already entered two of his contests before in the past, so hopefully you remember him, but if you don't, then just to quickly sum it up, uh, again, one of the big channels I watch a lot, uh, been following his channel for for quite a few years now, again, talks about music a lot, but he also does comedy stuff, which are pretty funny, because, you know, very witty and kind of, kind of, kind of humor that I like. Um, but yeah, so what he has here, this contest is called um, When I'm 65 Contest. And the reason why it's called that is because this is going on until his birthday. So I can't remember on hand. Um, it's, I want to say it's February 25th, am I, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm incorrect, I, I apologize. Uh, but in the description, I'll leave a link to the original contest video and his channel so you go ahead and check it out. Of course, when you're done watching this video, of course. But uh, anyhow, so basically, the main theme of this contest is about giving albums a second chance. Uh, and so you have kind of two options here. So either I mean, it's kind of the same uh, same uh, idea, but you're gonna pick an album that you haven't listened to in a long time. And this album could be something that you didn't like, or you did like, but for some reason, you kind of just shelved it. You never, you, you never really re-listened to it again after you l first heard it. Uh, so for my entry, I'm gonna kind of do the latter, where I did like this album, but for some reason, I had never re-listened to it until, of course, making this video. So I'm not sure if I already if it's already spoiled because if you look on my other screen, I don't even know if he's on screen or not. But hopefully, that tells you on on the person I'm talking about. Of course, his album's called Spectral Mornings, and this is the third studio album of the one and only Steve Hackett from Genesis. This is his third solo studio album. So, came out in 1978 if I'm not mistaken. So, I have not heard this album really since I bought it. I can't remember how many long, how many years ago. I want to say maybe three, two or three years. Uh, but yeah, I just kind of, I've always had this for a while, but never really re given another listen. So, this was a good way to kind of Give me, this is a good idea for help to help me kind of uh, kind of refamiliarize with this album, and maybe in the future I'll might maybe buy some more. So first, uh, of course, I just have the CD copy. Um, so let me give you some little bit of little bit of what's of who's playing on this. So by the way, this is what the CD looks like. It has the Crimson label, which of course I'm so used to seeing this on Genesis CDs. It's kind of weird seeing it on a non-Genesis album. But of course, Steve Hackett is, is, was a part of Genesis, so I guess it's not too too unusual. Um, but yeah, just let me t let you know who's playing on this. So of course you have Steve Hackett, who's providing guitars and and stuff like that. Um, he also provides backing vocals, and he, I know he sings vocals on one song, which we'll get to. Uh, the main vocalist, you have Pete Hicks. Um, then you have Dick Cadbury on, on bass and also does violin. Uh, you have Nick Magna, Nick Magnus, uh, mainly doing the keyboards. And then you have John Hackett, which is Steve Hackett's brother. He does like a lot of the horns, like flute, um, um, bass pedals, and bam Chinese bamboo, which models, which is kind of interesting. Then you have John Shearer on drums and percussion. All right, so I'm just gonna go through each each track and kind of give my brief thoughts on it. And we'll see if I liked it or I didn't like it as much on the second listen. So I wrote notes, by the way. So the first song is Every Day. And I think it's a really great opener. Like I kind of really like the more, it kind of has a weird like uh, bouncy opening. You know? Da, 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 something like that. I, I probably butchered it, but when you listen to it, you'll know what I mean. But yeah, it's a really great, strong opener, um, and also has has a nice guitar solo um, at the very end, which, which of course Steve Hackett is a great guitar player. So 
it was again like I said a great opening track and then you have the next song which is called the virgin and the gypsy and I'll I'm just gonna kind of say it's probably my favorite song on the album it's just this very very kind of lush very beautiful sounding very pretty sounding I'm not sure pretty is the right word but it's just a very I just absolutely love the melody throughout it. it's like the verses are really good but then the chorus comes in and it just really opens up um, and then you have like the vocal harmonies with Pete Hicks and Steve Hackett which it's, they actually sound very good together and then and that's coming I'll say like the vocals aren't really the strongest thing on this album but at this but when you think about it really the vocal the vocals aren't really the main the focus it's really about the instrumentation that's the more most important thing about this particular album and if i'm not mistaken that's pretty much goes for like most of steve's uh, solo albums um but yeah virgin and the gypsy love that song again my favorite song here and then you have a then you have two instrumentals that follow it you have um the red flower of tet i am not going to say the whole thing but uh but We'll just call it the red flower, but it's kind of a short instrumental, kind of taking influence by a lot of Asian culture. Like it has a very like a Asian sound to it, especially in terms of the, like when you think of Asian music, it's kind of Steve's interpretation of it, and it's a very nice instrumental. Don't have an issue with it. Um, the next one is like I said, another instrumental called Clocks, or in other words, the Angel of Mons. And this one was when I did research on it, I heard it was considered for an actual horror film, but it didn't make it, so they just kept the, the music and just put onto the album. And when you listen to it, it does kind of feel like it would be in, in some kind of like a late 70s, like B movie, B horror film, something like that, but still very cool. Like it's not too creepy, that's the point that, that it's like it's actually too creepy to listen to. It's actually not too bad. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty good and it has a nice drum solo in it as well. Um, and then track five, which if you were to, if you had the vinyl, this would be the last song on disc on the on side one. You have the ballad of the De decomposing man. So, kind of a kind of kind of an interesting one. It's kind of my least favorite song, if I'm going to be honest. But I kind of get it. It's supposed to be kind of like a more humorous song. Um, it's kind of supposed to be like tongue in cheek and something like that. But in here, Steve Hackett is taking lead vocals on here and. You can tell that Steve's not a vocalist, so I guess that's why he's. This one's supposed to be more like a more comedy, comedy centric song, because he's trying to. He's kind of playing into the fact that he can't really sing that well, so he's kind of just you know, putting on an accent and you know, you, you know, like basically like basically like some other Genesis like like early Genesis songs where they kind of had a more comedic tone, like Harold the Barrel. Um, which is kind of compared, kind of compared with this song, but yeah, my least favorite song, but again, not bad. But then side two comes in, and then we're kind of getting back into some really good stuff. Um, Lost time in Cord Cordo Cordoba. Uh, again, another pretty acoustic guitar number. Very classical. Very has a very classical feel, and it has a nice duet with the guitar, with the acoustic guitar and the flute. Uh, really enjoyed that one. Then you have Tiger Moth, and then you you have vocals on that. Uh, you have uh, uh, so, for, <laughs> I can't read my whole handwriting, but uh, very dramatic opening. Um, uh, like the first half, of kind of, it's kind of very like there's there's like some tension in there it's kind of building to something um and then the second half it kind of mellows out where you have a nice little acoustic finish which is a very very pleasing way to close it out and basically there this one and tiger moth does have lyrics and it's kind of telling the story about pilots during world war one and how many of them passed away and so it's really the, the lyrics are supposed to be the perspective of these deceased pilots and their ghosts uh, which is kind of which is kind of cool. I kind of I really enjoy that one as well. And then he finishes out with the title track. And this was originally supposed to have vocals, but the lead singer, this lead singer P Pete Hicks, decided like I think it's good without it. I don't think we need vocals on it. And and I mean musically, it's just absolutely a great way to close it. Another very beautiful song. I kind of would have liked to hear it with vocals I would I think that would have been kind of interesting but it's but even without vocals I think it's a very strong way to close out the album 
And so my final verdict on this album is that I really enjoy this one. Like, yeah, you know, this is an album that's supposed to be listened from start to finish. Like a lot of the songs you can't really take out of context, especially a lot of the instrumentals. But when I'm in the good mood, like I can see myself playing this album again. It's just, again, the music, um, the music on here is absolutely gorgeous, absolutely great melodies and just lots of great these great uh, arrangements throughout and again Steve Hackett like some amazing guitar work on here both acoustic and electric a lot of great textures he puts in here and all the other people who played on this album also do a fantastic job as well so I am gonna I am definitely considering on getting more Steve Hackett albums I know probably want to get some of his the, the, the two before this one um, but obviously if I'm sure there's tons of tons of Steve Hackett fans that know way more than I do so anything post this album let me know um, what albums I should check out and I'll consider buying them maybe so again so this is this was my entry for the uh, when I'm 65 contest hosted by Larry Graves the Canadian Stub Muffin thank you so much for for hosting this contest and yeah it was a lot of fun re revisiting this album so thank you very much for watching this um, again leave your thoughts if you've heard this album let me know your thoughts on it and I'll see you in the next video take care and goodbye for now